Okay, let's just try a new recording here. Welcome back. Um, before, all of my uh, earlier G-code files, when I was cutting curves, I don't know if we can see this in my hand in the way. No, all right. When I was cutting curves, or there was curves coming from G-code files, curves like the edge of this here, or maybe it's easier to see this way, those curves, or curves like on the edge of the R here in that font, kind of handy actually having the old burn patterns, the overburn, um, or even these circles here where you can sort of see they've been a little bit flattened. I don't know how well that's showing up on the uh, video. I'll have to check that after, but they're pretty good, but they're still a little bit flat on the top and bottom. And I had gone through everything trying to figure out why some of these larger circles with, with more steps were coming out nicer than the smaller ones, or even larger ones with many, many, many steps. I couldn't figure it out. I played with all kinds of things inside for the backlash, um, everywhere I could look for the backlash, and then I uh, thought, well, let's get the arc commands in, the G2 and G3 uh, arc commands that would allow you to draw um, part of an arc based on a center point uh, and where you are, a, a center point and where you want to be, it would draw that arc. Um, so for fun, I thought I'd look at that. And in doing that, I noticed an old problem that I had. Um, my steps are being stored in a variable type of long. And when you do math with longs, weird things can happen if you're not careful to properly convert to the long type. And I was using floats that have decimal values at the end of it. And the, de the decimal value was getting completely discarded. So the more you did an arc, the more little decimals were getting discarded, so by the time it got to the top of the arc, it had thrown away enough that that could be a millimeter or so. And uh, I think that was it. What we're going to do right now is I'm going to fire up the uh, power to the, uh, the steppers there, and uh, I'm going to run uh, just two G-code commands here. What would have one time taken about a couple hundred individual line commands sent over the serial port to the uh, Arduino is now just one g-code command and uh, the Arduino inside will decompose that into all the little line segments that it needs to be so let's just turn on the laser here and again if you're using these lasers folks make sure you got uh, um, your goggles I've got spare ones um, you can see maybe through that I'm not sure again if it's cutting down the, uh, the light at all, but in person it cuts it down quite a bit. Anyhow, so what we're going to do is we're going to run one side of the arc. So this is one G-code command. It was a G2, and it's going to go make a half circle or a semicircle around a point of X0, Y20, ending up at uh, Y40. And now I'm about to send the uh, complementary command that's going to bring that back to the start. In theory, this should bring that line right back to the beginning. Um, and in most cases, it does. So when it gets there, I'm just going to turn the beam off so we can see. And... Yep, that's dead on. It's gone right back to the beginning. Um, much better. In fact, I think if it's out by anything, it's probably a tiny bit of maybe the paper moving. Now, this yellow paper, um, it's just construction paper, the type like you'd craft paper or whatever you'd call it. And... Uh, at the current feed rate that I have set, which is about one-tenth of my maximum speed, with this laser I can um, cut right through it. That's actually a cutting speed right now for that feed rate. So if I was to, uh, just using the manual jog at, at one centimeter size um, moves, now I'm just gonna Turn the laser off, and you can see that's the homing speed. So if I was to go up to the top here, you see it's pretty slow. I'm just going to queue up a couple move commands. 
this won't take very long. In theory, the laser's right over the top of the circle, and I'm just going to show you that the rapid movement is quite fast. And that rapid movement there is about 80% of the maximum speed that this machine can go. If I go over that, it actually starts to shake because I need to reinforce the sides with a bit more metal. But uh, for our, what we're looking at here is um, uh, the cut in this case. Almost perfectly through. Again, your feed rate, I'm just going to leave that in there. The feed rate um, will control how much laser stays on, stays on your target material. And the different colors of the materials and the different materials, of course, will have different feed rates to achieve a cut. So here we've cut a little circle and taken out a one centimeter square from the middle of that. Uh, I'm just hoping that the camera here is staying in focus. I'm using this improvised tripod. But uh, as you can see it cut it. Um, it's how I cut the uh, Danger logo out of two pieces of construction paper and then glued them together. Um, what I might try just now is I'll run that uh, I'll run that same G-code again put on the foam and you'll see with the foam it's not going to go through. I'd have to slow it down. So let's turn the laser on. This is going to do the first part of that arc and uh, while it does that, I'll change my protective goggles here because these ones are more comfortable. Um, it looks like it's going into the foam pretty good, but the actual fact is that foam is uh, just the right color and just the right thickness, but you got to go about half the speed to get a proper cut. So there will be a dimple at the top and a dimple at the bottom where the laser started uh, and stopped if we look at the back side here in a second. So we're at the bottom there. I'm going to turn that off. We're going to go up 10. Then I'm going to change the feed rate to be about half of what it was. Turn the beam on. Let's go one centimeter over. Two centimeters up. I'm just manually jogging this right now. Um, I'm not passing any G code file. And I can queue up up to one command in advance, so that's why it's looking pretty smooth. I'm just uh, queuing up my commands as I can. Now, in the center of that circle, we should have done if I, with this slightly slower feed rate is the uh, box should be completely cut out. And if you saw that last move, that was the uh, homing feed rate. Let's change these glasses again. Um, we have the circle that was cut and actually let's bring this more forward. Hopefully this is uh, more visible. So we have the circle that was uh, etched or cut, because I don't think it really cut. And then we'll have the square. And actually, even at that half feed rate, it looks like it wasn't quite enough to go through. Nope, not quite enough to get through this foam. And that's mainly because we're using a violet laser on something that's kind of purpley or violet. Now, it is pretty close. But I think I'd have to, uh, there's a difference there. The circle's about half, that's about uh, two-thirds. I could have slowed it down to half that again and it would have cut that. But uh, that seems to be it. And the circles are coming out uh, darn near perfect. There's a tiny, tiny bit, maybe a quarter of a millimeter, if at most, of slop. And actually looking at the, uh, 
the box here. It's not in the arc. It's actually probably some actual backlash. Tiny bit of backlash because it's showing up in the arc. It wasn't showing up on paper. The foam is showing it because one of the things about the laser and foam is that it melts slightly around the laser and sometimes that can magnify your alignment issues. It can be pretty handy to run a thin sheet of foam or, or so. Like this is a little over a millimeter thick, maybe two millimeters. And the uh, error shows up. The circle's almost perfect at that speed, but here at a slower speed, uh, doing a, a box, that should have been dead on when it came around. It's just a little bit off. And I'd say that actually is mechanical. That actually will be a mechanical um, issue on that. But uh, that's pretty much that. There are some... Uh, other things that I've done recently, some other cuts and that that are not up here and I haven't shown, but uh, we can get into that later. Anyhow, um, thanks again for watching.